During a game of softball played by American citizens in their oil company's housing compound, terrorists set off a bomb, killing many Americans, as well as Saudi state police. The terrorists impersonate Saudi state police members. One team hijacks a car and starts shooting residents, while someone runs into the baseball court. He pretends to aid the Americans, but then reveals that he is a suicide bomber and blows himself up, along with everyone near him. Sergeant Haytham of the Saudi State Police disables the stolen SSP vehicle and kills the occupants. The FBI agent Manor calls up his colleague, Special Agent Fleury, to tell him about the attack. Shortly after this, a second bomb explodes in the compound, killing more people, including Manor. Back in the U.S., Fleury briefs his FBI team on the happenings in the kingdom. Special Agent Mays breaks down in tears upon hearing of Francis's death. Fleury whispers something into her ear, which causes her to control her emotions. While the higher rankers deny them permission to visit, Fleury blackmails the Saudi ambassador. He agrees to provide a plane to get into the country, in order to conduct an investigation. Fleury and his team, Mays, Levitt, and Sykes, go to Saudi Arabia. There, they meet Colonel al Ghazi, the commander of the Saudi State Police, forced tasked with policing the compound. The Americans come to find that al Ghazi is not in charge of the investigation. General Abdul Malik of the Saudi Arabian National Guard is in charge. He does not give them permission to participate in the investigation, rather he tells them to observe. When the FBI team is invited to Prince's Palace for a dinner, Mays is excluded because she is a woman. Fleury takes the opportunity to convince the prince that Colonel al Ghazi is a natural detective and should be allowed to lead the investigation. With this new change in leadership, the Americans are allowed a hands-on approach to the crime scene and discover that the second bomb was set off in an ambulance. The bombs have used marbles as projectiles. This leads them to discover that the brother of one of the terrorists had access to ambulances and state police uniforms. The police raid the house and manages to kill a few heavily armed men together with some teenagers. The Americans are then told that they have to go home by their embassy's deputy chief. However, Fleury and al Ghazi both believe that the teenagers that they had just killed were just amateur fighters and were not the real planners behind the attacks. On their way to the airport, Fleury notices a boy watching their convoy from an overpass and then sees that the last SUV of their convoy has stopped far behind them. He then notices a speeding car coming towards them and that he grabs the wheel from Sergeant Haytham. This allows them to partially evade the collision when the speeding car runs into the first SUV of their convoy, setting off a trunk full of bombs. The fourth SUV finally drives up, and the men inside pull out Levitt, throw him into the back and drives away. Fleury manages to wound one attacker, and al Ghazi commandeers a civilian vehicle to chase the fourth SUV. After driving for a while, they reach the dangerous neighborhood of Riyadh. As they pull up, a gunman launches a rocket at them, and a firefight starts. Both parties fire at each other, using heavy weapons and bombs. Inside the complex, Levitt is tied up and gagged, while his attackers prepare to tape a video of his beheading. After having killed their attackers, al Ghazi decides that three of them must enter and find Levitt, and two must stay behind to cover the entrance. While Sykes and Haytham watch the entrance, al Ghazi, Fleury and Mays enter the building, following a blood trail. They manage to finish off many other gunmen inside. Maze, separate from the other two, scares a little girl in an apartment, and she enters to find a family with little children, their mother and grandfather. She yells at them to stay sharp, and goes across the hall to another apartment to find Levitt and his attackers. She kills the remaining insurgents in a tough fight. The team starts to come outside with Levitt. However, Maze feels unsettled about the little girl, and walks in to give the girl a lollipop. In return, the girl gives her a marble, matching the ones pieced together earlier from the bomb scene. Fleury then realizes that there is a trail of blood leading to the back of the apartment, and al Ghazi sees the grandfather, suspects something, and asks to help him get up. When the old man gives him his hand, confirms his idea that he is the terrorist leader. 
Abu Hamza's teenage grandson walks out of the bedroom and manages to shoot al Ghazi in the neck twice with a pistol, prompting Fluri to kill him. As Abu Hamza dies, his younger grandson hugs him. Abu Hamza whispers something into his ear to calm the child down. We see al Ghazi dying bravely in Fluri's arms. At al Ghazi's house, Fluri and Haytham meet his family. Fluri tells his son that al Ghazi was his good friend. The Americans return home, and Levitt has one final question for Fluri. What did he whisper to Maze to calm her down? The scene cuts to Abu Hamza's daughter asking her son what his grandfather whispered to him as he was dying. Fluri recalls saying, We're gonna kill them all. The grandson tells his mother, Don't fear them, my child, we are going to kill them all, implying that this war is a never ending vicious cycle. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.